The number three pick in the 2020 NFL draft was just traded for a fifth rounder. We're looking at the Detroit Lions sending cornerback Jeffrey Akuda to the Atlanta Falcons from every angle today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are locked on NFL scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A big thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And of course, a big welcome to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single show, welcome. Welcome, Joe, to National Kyle Has a Mouse in His Garage Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are we now, doing? So Got a trap set or what? Well, we obviously mo- we, we moved in December, right? Yeah. So it it's a lot of junk out there. There's lots of piles of stuff. And what I realized was put out there and didn't realize that it was there was a whole big Costco sized box of like Doritos and mm. Frito Lays and lays potato chips like the the individual bag portions but it's like the 40 bag like party catering thing and there was some holes chewed in some of the bags so i threw the box out threw the whole box out right it was yesterday trash went out this morning i'm at 5 30 roll the, the the trash down empty the trash from the uh the the kitchen walk it out open the lid to put the bag in the mouse is on top of the box, like Stuart Little style. Oh, no. Jumps out of the can and scurries back into my garage. <laughs> so you know there's a mouse I in can there. confirm there's a mouse in mm. my garage, yes. Have you informed your wife? This is the big... She's, she's aware. aware. She's okay. Aware. All right. Well... We're, we are going to try to remove all temptation from my home and coax it out that way. I, I will use the traps as last resort. Maybe you can find like a rat snake and just put it in your garage. Do you ever see that video of like there's somebody who like apparently like rats in their their walls or something like that? So they cut a hole and they like let a boa constrictor inside and then all the mice came out and then the snake bait came back out after they flushed the system out. I just want to do that. You know, I'm not. Oh, you would sign up for that. Yeah, I'm not scared of snakes like you are. I yeah, scared maybe is not the right word. I don't want to throw you into the bus. I just know yeah. you're not a fan, not a fan of legless reptiles. I'm very interested in them. Very interested. I just yeah, don't a necessarily big want. Yeah, be a big herper. You know me. After we get done here, <laughs> going out and gonna Pull flip some tins and see what I can find here. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about uh, <laughs> Jeff a different Akuda. type of yeah, different type of situation here. Jeff Akuda was traded from the Detroit Lions to the Atlanta Falcons in exchange for a fifth round draft pick and so there's some fascinating layers to this conversation to examine from both the Lions perspective and the Atlanta Falcons perspective and why this decision was made from both sides so that's what we're going to unpack today obviously Jeff Akuda, the number three pick in the 2020 NFL draft so we're going to close out this conversation by looking back at the 2020 NFL draft and considering that choice now that we have the benefit of hindsight but with Jeff Akuda, obviously the story early on here for his career at least his first two seasons, was injuries. He missed seven games during his rookie season, missed all but one game in year two, and then he kind of comes together for him in 2022 this past season. He's healthy. He played fairly well. You felt like he was turning the corner, and here we are. The Lions package him to the Atlanta Falcons for only a fifth-round pick. Of course, they saved $5 million by sending him there, um, but obviously a big transition here at the cornerback position for the Detroit Lions based on them sending away Jeff Akuda and, of course, them signing Emmanuel Mosley, signing Cam Sutton, signing C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Obviously, Detroit looking to improve this secondary, and they've made a lot of changes this offseason already. Yeah, I think that was kind of the surprising thing for me was the fact that you mentioned this was the year that Jeff Akuda was okay, right? Like, he he wasn't number three pick, but I think when you – consider just how little football he played and the fact that there was a scheme change 
in the midst of that because he was drafted in Matt Patricia's last year. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. So then you make the change to Dan Campbell and his coaching staff, and they also fired their secondaries, secondary coach halfway through the season this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so there's been a lot of coaching turnover there for Jeff Okuda and a torn Achilles, which is not a small thing to come back from. And he plays moderately well. I guess I was just surprised that the cost of the upside of Jeff Okuda not being something that Detroit coveted more in spite of signing Cam Sutton and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, like you mentioned, and Emmanuel Mosley. Like those, those are good additions to the corner room. I think what this probably tells me more than anything is Detroit already knew this wasn't a second player contract for us. So if we're going to move him, how do we maximize moving him? Yeah, there, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no question about it. That's exactly what Brad Holmes has done here. He's taken a look at the player and said, you know what? He's not long-term for us. We'll take the 5 million in cap savings. Now we'll get something for him, but we're not going to pick up his fifth year option, which is a choice that Atlanta will now have to yeah. make by uh, sometime in early May. But also, this is very much in line with what we've seen with Brad Holmes, where he's willing to move on from guys, especially ones that he didn't draft. And I think that's important here. The Bob Quinn, Matt Patricia regime of Detroit Lions football is not not um, well respected, right? It's not looked back upon fondly by Lions fans. Nor should and it be. Cutting ties with some of their staples has been a thing for brad holmes trading away tj hawkinson last year who they identified as look he's a good player we're just not gonna pay him and, and keep him around and we're gonna take what we can get for him right now even if it means trading him within the division um and, and they've done business before right they had the big trade up with jameson williams with the minnesota vikings so he's not afraid to to work with his division rivals uh they cut amani oruarie after he showed some progress as yeah. well right they, this is what brad holmes has done it's what a lot of gms do right they look at the players that they're inheriting and make choices and uh it feels like a lot of times new regimes will want to kind of get their own players in the building and sometimes that comes at the expense of letting some guys go that were there because of the previous leadership I think this really boils down to this wasn't my guy because yeah. I'm looking at Detroit for 2024 you know much cap space they're currently scheduled for according to spot track and I, I want to specify it's according to spot track because I know we just did a we did yeah. the the quarterback thing there's a large discrepancy to spend, depending on what resource you use in any given time for what the cap projections are going to look like so this is spot track 2024 salary cap space Detroit lines how much space do you think they have I honestly have no idea. I, I would guess there's a reasonable amount of money, but I wouldn't think it's like gobs of it. Okay. So uh, bear in mind, they currently are projected, according to Track at like $25, $28 million in space for this year. Still, this year. Good, they're in good shape. Yeah. Joe, it's $80 million. Mm -hmm. And here's the expiring contracts. Romeo Aquara who's currently on an average of $12.3 million per season. You losing sleep over that one? Not at all. Okay, Charles Harris, you losing sleep over that one? Oh, a little sleep over that one. No, I'm not losing I a had wig. A, I did that for you. Yeah, okay. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, you want to run it back? You'll have every opportunity You'll find to run out. it back. Right, yeah. right. Emmanuel Mosley, you know, another one-year deal. Those those guys combined six and a half and, and six million apiece. Uh, Big V at guard? Nope. Josh Reynolds, Will Harris... Uh, Khalif Raymond, DeAndre Swift, who I understand was was once upon a time, but is not really anymore. Also, not a Bob, or excuse me, not a Brad Holmes pick. Would not be surprised if they move on from him as well. Right, no doubt. Like imagine they draft Bijan, and they they gave um, Montgomery good money, right? Decent contract, yeah. So would not be surprised if they go in a different direction from DeAndre Swift this offseason as well. He's 25 years old, going into a contract year. And $2.1 million, it's, it's reasonable investment opportunity for somebody. Jason Kambinda, Jalen Reeves-Maven, Nate Sudfeld, Matt Nelson, Michael Badgley, Julian Aquara, Jonah Jackson, Logan Stenberg, Anthony Pittman, Benito Jones, Brock Wright, Scott Daly, Shane Zelstra, Quintez Cephas, Jerry... J like these are the dudes they're lo they're losing, and they have eighty million dollars in cap space next year. 
So this was not, hey, let's get out in front of this. And fit, we don't want to exercise fifth year option. It's going to be limiting to us. This really, to me, is is pretty straightforward. Of wasn't our guy. As we project him forward, even though he played well, we brought some other bodies in here that we want to take bets on instead. We're going to value moving in a different direction. What does this tell you about what you think Detroit's intentions are with their draft picks? I know they're picking pretty Corner early, right? You, I mean, yeah. and Devin Witherspoon, really, the corner from Illinois, feels like a Detroit Lions type of player. That wouldn't surprise me. Of course, even Christian Gonzalez, I would say, is is the type of player I could see them liking. Um, they can go with an interior defensive lineman. Is there a world where Jalen Carter gets to five? I think it's possible, right? If you get four quarterbacks and Will Anderson, guess what? You're sitting there staring at Jalen Carter if that is a player that you want to roll with. If you do want to do the B. John Robinson thing, you can do it. If you want to do the tight end thing, you can do it. I think the Lions have a lot of options, but to me this does suggest that maybe they really are comfortable with one of the corners that they can get. And um, well, They'll get their pick, right? They, they, Seattle ain't they picking want a corner. No, Arizona, right. you can't imagine, is picking corner at three, even if they stay. Even yeah, if they trade down three. to four, they're going to go pass rusher. You would think. Don't you think the big – don't you feel like the big draft media – has been so hot on Witherspoon that that kind of gives you that expectation that that's going to be the first corner. Like, we love Christian Gonzalez. I think you and I look at Christian Gonzalez, and there's a number of people across the space that we have great deal of respect for that look at Christian Gonzalez and say this is the most complete profile for a corner. But doesn't it feel like those who have the most intimate connections across the league in big draft media have been really pounding hard on Devin Witherspoon. For sure. For sure. And he feels like a lion to me. Yeah. Would not surprise me at all. Well, we've considered this trade from the Lions perspective. We're going to shift gears to the Atlanta Falcons here in the next segment. But first, I need to tell you about Ultimate Football GM. We've talked about this game before. You got to try it out, especially if you think you'd make a good general manager. When you play Ultimate Football GM, you get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team as you play through seasons and lead your team to try to build a historic dynasty with ultimate football GM, you're responsible for hiring coaches and coordinators. You got to negotiate player salaries and terms. You got to deal with free agency, the draft injuries, personnel issues, all the ups and downs of a season, all this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate football GM is completely free and playable offline on the go as you want to. And when you want to. Locked on NFL scouting listeners, you get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use promo code Locked On in the game store. That's Locked On, so make sure to check it out today. Again, to download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. I'm going to be playing that game sitting in my garage with my broom waiting for that mouse to, to show oh. his face so I can sweep him out of here. Mm, just, just kind of give him a little, little shove and get him outside, right? And let right, him continue the, on give, with his give, life. Give him the nudge. Yeah, go, yeah, go. Nudge. There's a nice common area with a bunch of vegetation right mm. across the street. I don't want to use force. I mean, I really don't want. No. To, like all life is precious, as far as I'm concerned. So, just right. I'm gonna judge him out there, and <laughs> <laughs> there's no food in here, so just beat it. That's the goal. Gotta make sure it stays that way. Maybe, no food in the garage. Maybe if I do that, a falcon will swing by and scoop him up. Ooh. Oh. How's man. that for a segue? Let's talk I about like the Falcons. That. I like that. Getting their own corner. Jeff Akuda. Fifth round pick. Great trade for Atlanta as far as I'm concerned. What do you think? Yeah, I, what's I like, agree. What's the, what's the risk? Nothing. Nothing. You're not risking anything. You're taking on five million. You're giving up a fifth round pick. And you really need a guy opposite of AJ Terrell, who two years ago was awesome, kind of took a step back last year. And I think some of the makeup of that defense contributed to it. Mm -hmm. And now you feel like you have some options with Casey Hayward, who maybe you could play in the slot. Um, but you've made some investments here. You've really, you've really done a lot for your defense. And, and of course, Ryan Nielsen now taking over as a defensive coordinator, but you paid Jesse Bates. You sign David Onyemeta. You sign Calais Campbell. Mm -hmm. Caden Ellis comes over. Obviously, familiarity with Ryan Nielsen from his time with New Orleans comes over on a on a pretty nice deal that they gave him and, a, and Mike Hughes as well. I guess the 
the Falcons really wanted to scoop up these Lions corners. And you know, one thing we didn't say about the Lions is their overhaul, you, you know, not a great defense last year. Last in yards in terms of the most given up in the NFL, 28th in scoring. Atlanta has their own issues on defense, and, and they've made a lot of strides here with personnel, new coaching, and, and certainly the latest addition being Jeffrey Akuda. Yeah, I th- you think about the additions to the secondary of, of Bates and Jeff Akuda now. Well, if Akuda plays to the standard he set last year and doesn't get any better, it's still an upgrade, right? Yes. Yes. And it's a significant upgrade over any other option that they had to play outside if we're assuming that an aging Casey Hayward is best suited to play inside. So I think that in the South, what about the South, you're going to have rookie quarterback in Carolina. You're going to have your fair share of challenges defending New Orleans, unless Mike Thomas goes down again. And, and then, you know, your perimeter play, you feel like you have the options to kind of compete. And then you have Tampa Bay, who has all the receivers, but offensive line questions. They've got a glaring hole at left tackle. Their offensive line was was brutal last year. And you have Baker Mayfield now as, as the penciled-in starting quarterback. Atlanta low-key positioning themselves pretty nicely yeah. to be competitive here in the South this year. They just need some. They need somebody on the other side of the ball to just keep it between the lines. But they're but they're going to be. The irony of of course with Arthur Smith, they're going to be NFC Titans. Right, <laughs> you can feel the formula. It's we're going to play hard yeah. on this football. We're going to run the ball. We're not going to beat ourselves. We're going to try to be more opportunistic. You got a playmaker in Jesse Bates now in the secondary. You got much more formidable in the line of scrimmage up front. Jeff Akuda, can you take another step? And the opportunity cost of five million dollars versus eight hundred thousand dollars for whatever play you were going to get in the fifth round. I promise you, they're not as talented as Jeff Akuda is. No chance. I love it for them. And to me, this opens up more of their draft options as well, where I kind of thought Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, they're picking like number eight, seven, eight, something more like that. Um, I've been thinking of them as a corner spot Yes, with, you know, with Christian Gonzalez slash Devin Witherspoon uh, as as an option for them. But to me, this potentially allows them to focus back in on edge, right? I know that they've made some adjustments here uh, with, with players, but I think they're more interior rushers. I know that they got those young players, Malone and Ebiketti, uh, but if they wanted to go with maybe a Tyree Wilson, if he's available at that spot, I think that opens it up. But also it opens up offense. I'm not off the idea of Bijan Robinson to Atlanta. Uh, I'm not off the idea of another receiver to Atlanta. So if they wanted to go out and get Jackson Smith and Jigba, like as wide receiver one and add him to this mix, I think that's very possible. So it, it, it to me, it, it allows Atlanta to focus on some other things in the draft that I think they need outside of corner and they get, obviously, an unbelievably talented player in Jeff Akuda who made strides last year. And I don't know that you sit here and commit to that fifth-year option right now. Uh, but Let's we'll see how minimum, the draft goes. You could see how the draft goes, but you can also see how next year goes and enjoy Akuda on $5 million. And, you know, if, if he winds up being a guy you like, you can extend him. Yeah, because what, what's the – what's Akuda's best-case scenario to maximize his contract? Right, like play you, well. You, right, you, you're gonna play well, but but if you play well and you say, okay, well, he was modest, he was sufficient in 2022, and then he played well in 2023. What's the ceiling for the market on a, a renegotiated contract extension? He's not getting into that upper stratosphere of corners. Wouldn't think so. So fifth year option. I wish I knew it off the top of my head. Can you? filibuster for me while i float around and produce this thing for a minute yeah kyle's gonna float around and produce this thing and look up the fifth year option price for jeffrey akuda which is going to be interesting because i don't know that he's going to qualify for the playtime piece of it kyle has it and it's T- top top tier is 18 so he's not that he's not even no. a one time so he's a playing time player I think he's a minimum, right? He's he didn't. I mean, he barely played his first okay. two seasons. So playing time is played at least seventy five percent in two of their first three seasons. Nope, did not, or averaged at least a seventy five percent snap share through three seasons. No, or those who crossed fifty percent barrier in each of their first three seasons. So no, this is this is a tier one. It's eleven point five million dollars is the That's fifth right. year option. So you can look at it and say we can get him for two years, twenty, if you want to. Yeah, but e- even if you decline the option, which I would be more inclined to do, to to double down on the point that you said, 
Mm -hmm. If he plays well, okay, he's going to get 12 or 13 on a two or one year deal with one year guaranteed money. Like, right. The the opportunity cost is a couple million dollars and that's it. Cause I still think you're going to have, like if he goes out and is awesome this year, I still think you're going to be nervous about the injury stuff. Correct. And so I, I don't know that he's in line for like the six year hundred something million dollar no. type contract. No, he's not going to touch anywhere no. north of 12 and a half or so right. at, in the best of case scenarios. So I'm not picking up that option. There's no Correct. chance. I, I would not either, especially for a fifth round pick. You're not emburdened to make it work for multiple years for a fifth round pick. Not at all. Half your fifth round picks are off the original team that drafted them by the end of two years anyway. Right. So the, you don't have that much sunk in here to, to be that concerned with it. You let it play out. And um, I think you can look at both sides here and, and understand why the decision was made to trade for or part with Jeffrey Akuda. When we get back from a very quick break, we're going to look back at the 2020 NFL draft and consider the number three pick Jeff Akuda and maybe what the Lions should have done differently right after this. Okay, we're back. Joe, my number one piece of advice for the Lions with a dime machine at pick number three is don't pick a corner. With the dime machine? Time. Time oh, time machine. machine. Time Sorry. machine, you dunce. <laughs> I thought I heard dime. I'm like, wait, what? A time machine. Dime okay. machine. A dime machine. Okay, so at the time, nobody questioned this, right? Correct. Jeff Akuda was a pretty transcendent talent. Uh, Good tape at Ohio State. A little, little, little sloppy, right? Come on. I was wondering if we could get through this entire Jeff Akuda conversation and without that coming up. That. But it here we are. I'll tell you these yeah, you're right. Like the corner the the second corner was CJ Henderson, and that was a player I was never in on. Uh so those top ten corners really didn't didn't deliver. I mean, dude, the entire class. I'm gonna read some names to you. Okay. Akuda, Henderson, Christian Fulton, Jeff Gladney, AJ Terrell, Damon Arnett, Trayvon Diggs. No Igbenogany, Bryce Hall, Michael Lamugia, uh, Ojemudia, Darnay Holmes, Troy Pride, Jalen Johnson, Cam Dantzler, Amik Robertson, Isang Bassey, Josiah Scott, Harrison Hand, Trajan Bandy, John Reed, Dane Jackson, Stanford Samuels, Kendall Vildor, Reggie Robinson, Neville Clark, Bo Peak Keys, Lamar Jackson, Graylin Arnold, Jace Whitaker, Jarvis Davis, Stanley Thomas Oliver, Chris Williamson, A.J. Green, Lavert Hill, Parnell Motley, Miles Bryant, and James Pierre. Well, those those are there's a lot of bad there, but I think you you have A.J. Terrell in this class at corner who's good. You've got Trayvon Diggs who has become a meaningful player. Christian Fulton is a good starter for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I think Jalen Johnson has shown some promise. I'm a little concerned there. So those have been okay, your so redeeming you three, players. Th- three redeeming players on a 38-player list. Right. Yeah, that's the Don't NFL draft, draft the for you. Right. In hindsight, yeah, you this say is, that. This, this, in hindsight, this was not a good corner class. I would agree with that. So, like, in hindsight right now, Joe Burrow still goes one to LSU. Or, excuse right. me, goes one to the Bengals. Herbert probably goes two to Washington. Washington. Who goes three? Is it Andrew Thomas? Probably. Well, no. Tristan Wirfs? Trying to see. (laughs) Is it? No, it's Justin Jefferson. It's Justin Jefferson probably goes three. And Detroit's needed wide receiver. What what made me pause for the tackle, both of the tackles was really well. Tackle was still a strength, even though they would go on to draft Penny Sewell one round later as an obvious BPA. I think the obvious BPA here also happens to be an intersection of a player of need with Justin Jefferson. And so, but, but that, I, but I that would that would have been hearsay at the time. So if you yeah. if you put yourself back in 2020, Joe Marino, right? It's April 12th, 2020, mm-hmm. and you have a dream from yourself who comes back in a dime machine. And I said it on purpose that time. Mm-hmm. Got it. And you tell yourself in a dream. <laughs> Joe, they can't draft a coup at three. They have to pick someone else. Who do you pound the table for putting yourself back in those shoes? 
Like That's what would fine. have been the, the next socially acceptable at the time alternative to Jeff Okuda? Because Burrow and Young, that was pretty much chalk. I probably would have started to think about an offensive tackle. I would have thought about I, Tristan Wirfs slash Andrew Thomas. Would you have considered Wills? Like, I don't know how you stack Oh, no, Wills. I loved Wills. Yeah, right, I loved that's Wills. why I, – and I had Wills as my top tackle in that class too. Yeah, I loved Wills. And then I had so Wirfs, would have been I had like Wirfs that. two, Thomas three. That's probably where I, I would have thought of one of those tackles. Would so, no, cons- I wouldn't have thought to pick Justin Jefferson. No, would I like c- Jefferson. I had him as a first-round grade, but I wouldn't have said three. Would you have considered C.D. Lamb? No, I think Henry Ruggs was my my guy that was year, he? receiver. I love that first round grades on both of them, but man, this is a fun group to look back at. My top ten that year was Burrow, Chase Young, Isaiah Simmons, Derek Brown, C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, Jeff Okuda, Jedrick Wills, Tua Tagovailoa, Henry Ruggs, and then Herbert at eleven. You're gonna make me want to pull up my board, man. Go ahead, do it. We got a little time here. You're gonna have we're, to filibuster. We're, we're done early. We're usually we For usually us. got ten minutes left in the show at this juncture right. in the of the show. And uh, this the twenty twenty NFL draft. This was one of the best, better. Yes, this was twenty twenty. That group had eight tier one players. That's a very like your your top ten valuations to have eight in one class is very good. And I would say of these these guys, you have. Probably half of them have lived up to expectation. I'm hoping Akuda can can bounce back. I'm interested to see what Isaiah Simmons looks like now that he's finally landed at an individual spot. Did you find it? I pulled up the wrong year. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, this that's, is... that's why we said 2020. I thought yeah. that would mean you'd... You would think my folders would be Hold a little on. more organized so that I wouldn't have uh, went <laughs> to there and got to the wrong thing. Uh, 2020 prospect scoring there sheet. You I bet you this is what I'm looking for. I bet for, that's right? it. Here, Joe Burrow. Here he is. All right. It's still loading. There's a lot of information in this document. Looking at um, the next tier down. Shout out Jeremy Chin. Had him 44th. Yeah, he's fun. All right, here it is. Uh, I had it. (laughs) I had a Joe Burrow one. Okay. Chase Young two. Jeff Akuda three. Okay. Jedrick Wills four. Isaiah Simmons. Oops, five. Tua, six. Henry Ruggs, seven. Andrew Thomas, eight. Jerry Judy, nine. Was he I in Judy, this class? I Judy, six, yeah. Okay, and, and C.D. Lamb, ten. Okay. That's how I had it. Okay. So we had, out of top ten, I think we had, we had like, Andrew Thomas was the only one that I didn't have in my top ten that you had in your top ten. So we had, oh, so then who, who's your player that you had in that I didn't? Uh did you say Derek Brown? I had him 11. Derek Brown. So there's the only difference. We had just different yeah. order of different players. It's fun. Obviously, we, we're, we're not going to have that same degree of, of depth, but I would love to hold up boards the week of the draft oh, this year. Yeah, we, we certainly we can. We could do the battle of the boards, but with the understanding that they're team-specific boards, but there's going to be – and that will be actually be a fun exercise. Because we're looking at the players through different schemes. So I think it'll be very helpful to identify, hey, look, here's my explanation why me grading for Buffalo versus me grading for Miami has this dynamic difference for a specific player because of the scheme specificity for each team. And then you compound that by 30 other teams, and that gives you the beauty of the NFL draft and why it is as... Uh, wild and wacky of a three-day experience as you have. So we'll, we'll we do sh- that. We shall. We okay. shall. Excellent. We will have battle to battle to the boards. We'll ride again. We can't wait. Uh, we will ride again here on Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes. Uh, we are doing Devin White deep dive tomorrow, doing a film study, talking about how he got here to this point, who Devin White was coming out of LSU, who he was early in his career at Tampa Bay, who he is now in his career at Tampa Bay, talking about potential trade valuation, contract extensions. Uh, but we're going to go deep into the tape. So Joe and I are each going to watch a number of games of Devin White and get ourselves prepared for this conversation. And we're looking forward to that. So once you hit subscribe, keep it locked in here on Locked on Dolphins because it's your teams every day. 
So you need to make sure that you join the Everydayers Club and come back and see us on a daily basis, either on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. But that is going to do it for us. We are out. Make it a great rest of your Wednesday. Peace.